Hello, hello. This is kind of a different video than I usually do. Uh, I got special permission from WizKids to talk about some games that we have coming up in the next year. Uh, normally you wouldn't see uh, even a peak of these until they were like just about ready to go to release, but uh, it's a different time now and we want to show you a little bit of what we're working on in the longer future, uh, looking out into 2021. Granted, all of this is still in development, so nothing you see here is going to be absolutely final, but uh, it's an early peek at what you might see in the future. Uh, so this time, I wanted to show you a cool project that uh, I've been working on for the past, I think, uh, three or four months, I think. Um, this is called Free Radicals. The hook of the game is that uh, at some point in the past, uh, I, I like to personally think of it as the 1990s, um, these mysterious objects appear all over the world, floating over different cities and different locations within cities. Um, and uh, there is technology that uh, can be gleaned from these objects. And that technology is what results in this divergence into a more cyberpunk high-tech uh, future with lots of hard light technology and stuff. Um, and the objects themselves are so disruptive that uh, they are called free radicals. And that's the name of the game. And in the game, 10 factions, each tried uh, in their own personal ways to unlock the mysteries of these free radicals uh, and gain the technology and power that they have uh, uh, at their disposal now. It's all asymmetrical uh, individual mini games that each player is playing on their own that intersect with a central game board. Uh, in this setting, we don't, uh, we don't go that far to explain what the free radicals are. Uh, they're definitely just uh, an impetus to uh, to trigger a, a very rapid technological revolution uh, in this setting. The uh, the hard light technology that you get from the free radicals um, just happens to have this look, an almost pixelated look to it, uh, which really contrasts with the highly detailed uh, and painted renderings of the different characters. Um, and the trick of this uh, look was making sure that it was clear that that pixelation was intentional, that it wasn't just an artifact of JPEGs or, or what have you. Um, and as a part of the game, also, we have the uh, different buildings. Uh, there's going to be 10 different buildings on the main board. And essentially, these are uh, sort of worker placement spaces that you'll unlock. And each one has its own free radical that floats above it. Uh, so the main board uh, right now is designed to be a trifold, a very long single trifold board. Um, and uh, this has the big panorama of that city skyline with the big free radical in the background. Uh, in the center here, you'll see these uh, different places where you're going to be putting uh, cards as a display to draft from. Uh, here's where the central deck would go. And this is a general repository for all of the other components, loose uh, coins, cubes, that kind of stuff. But uh, the actual worker placement spaces that you see here um, are the vertical farm, the company spire, the cyber cafe, the grant office, the casino, the bazaar, the cast tower, the aero dock, the hollow castle, and the neon church. Uh, each of these has a, a different main effect that you can see in the big area here. Uh, and the way the, the visual language works is that uh, if there's a conversion of some kind, uh, it's gonna be in this black uh, half of the action rectangle, the, the chevron, and on the white half is the stuff that you get. Uh, so for example, under the cast tower, the main action is that you would uh, spend one coin and then you will gain three cards from the drafting, uh, drafting row or from the deck. Uh, some of the other more interesting things that happen when you uh, visit an area is that if you are the faction that's affiliated with that location, you get to do an extra thing. And some of these effects, uh, if you're not playing that faction, seem just utterly ridiculous. Uh, for example, the artisan faction, uh, their special effect when they go to the grant office is that uh, they can uh, they get three points if they use the femtoscope. And if you're not playing the if you're not playing the artisans, you do not you do not have a femtoscope. You don't know what a femtoscope is. But if you're playing the artisans, you have a femtoscope uh, part of your personal player board that will totally make sense. Uh, along the top here is one of the shared areas of the main board that everybody is keeping track of. This is the knowledge track, and this represents how much you know about the free radicals. Um, and the thing about the uh, knowledge track that makes it kind of cool is that one of the uh, ongoing long-term effects uh, is that uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of a negotiation uh, diplomacy uh, thing where uh, you can increase your own knowledge, but you can also increase the knowledge of other players. 
Um, and in doing so, you'll usually get some benefit from that. So it's uh, kind of a give and take. I, I, help you, I help you, you help me. Um, moving on, uh, this is just the rule book. We have not really developed uh, too much of this yet. The first page ostensibly right now is going to be a, a quick overview of what the premise of the game is. Uh, you can kind of see where I took the free radicals out of Tomaz's art and integrated them onto actual photos and then did a uh, video distortion filter over them with a little bit of a HUD display to make it look like uh, they're being scanned or watched from a helicopter or an airplane or something. Uh, I thought it helped give a, uh, a sense of place. Uh, the rest of the rulebook is not is not nearly finished, so you're going to see a lot of empty white space here, so there's not really much to see. Um, so this is the document that has the personal player boards. So just to kind of quickly go over what the what the individual minigames are, uh, the farmers, uh, their minigame is uh, essentially a, a domino tile laying game uh, where you will take uh, tiles out of these bioreactor uh, spaces. That's personally what I call them, uh, just bioreactors. Uh, and the idea is that you take these dominoes, you put them into your farm area, the, the farm board here, and uh, you trigger special actions uh, based on whatever the crop is when you join two crops together that are the that are matching. The executives um, have a, a kind of a Moncala uh, mechanic where you are moving uh, asset tokens from one company to another, essentially like shifting your assets from shell companies to shell companies in this uh, in sort of a ploy to to kind of hide those assets. And all the while you're trying to accomplish certain projects which require combinations of those assets to be at uh, at particular buildings uh, or, or at, at rather in um, in one company, I should say. So that's where the available projects here, that's this little central area, that's where that would go. Uh, so moving on to the yellow factions, the artisans, uh, they play with the actual main cards that, uh, that you use in the game. Uh, so uh, in order to activate and make the buildings available in the main player board that you see here, uh, you see these white uh, spaces here. Those are spaces to indicate uh, who has uh, actually awakened that free radical. Um, and up to two players can awaken a free radical and thus make the uh, that space available for people to, to place their, uh, their figure on and choose that action. Um, and uh, the, what the artisans do is that they take those cards and use them in a different way. Uh, they place them and use them to, uh, to power their uh, different tools, which includes the femtoscope, which I mentioned earlier, um, which increases the color, uh, increases the knowledge of one color, and it has to be the active color, and there's different rules here for what is the active color, so to speak. The other yellow faction is the underground, um, and uh, their whole uh, deal is that they, they control uh, nine different underground characters and each of those characters can level up to uh, do additional effects and uh, you have a personal deck of mini cards that have the uh, the different uh, characters on them and so you choose one of the cards that you have in your hand you do that uh, character's effect and you can do additional actions based on how how high of a level they have the other uh the other factions uh let's see the green faction uh is either the hoteliers or the uh, merchants. So the hoteliers also have a uh, a tile laying element to it, but uh, they're going to be using polyominoes actually. Um, and each of the polyominoes is a uh, different arrangement of uh, hotel rooms. We haven't settled on anything yet here, but um, but that's generally the vibe: is that uh, you're taking your polyominoes that have been randomly selected for you. You place them onto one of the four different hotels, which in turn create uh, allows you to do the action of those uh, of those hotels. Um, and each of the action, each of the uh, hotels has a choice of one action or the other. The merchants um, have a uh, the idea is that uh, you have a merchant pawn uh, that can go to one of these five markets, which are represented by these uh, five columns. Um, and when you go to that market, uh, you do all of the actions that uh, that have a stall built next to them. Uh, and and then after that is done, you can do any of the three actions in that column that do not have uh, stalls next to them. So uh, the idea is that you want to build stalls so that you make each market visit a little bit more efficient for you. So uh, ideally you would have a bunch of stalls in one uh, market and thus be able to do a bunch of actions beyond just the basic three that you would normally do. 
uh, blue. Uh, the blue uh, faction uh, includes the Couriers, uh, and the Couriers are a pick up and deliver um, a mini game uh, with uh, some familiar elements if you've played other pick up and deliver games. Uh, this is my favorite faction, I think, uh, just because I, I love pick up and deliver as a, as a genre. And it's uh, got a cool thing that opens up uh, almost a tech tree when you deliver to certain districts over time because you start getting um, additional powers whenever you take an action when you visit that district. It's, it's really neat. I dig it. Uh, the other blue uh, faction is the cast, uh, sorry, the uh, entertainers. Um, and uh, the entertainers are an interesting thing because on the main board, you don't really see much going on here. Um, you see that there's a main stage, a backstage, something called a prediction. A lot of the action on the entertainers comes from their personal uh, card deck, their personal mini cards. Uh, the card deck has uh, the different types of entertainers that you might see uh, in a futuristic cyberpunk setting. Uh, every entertainer has a talent, which is its uh, ability that you can do when you play that card. Um, it also has a venue, which is the color code of the building that you can visit whenever, if you want to do that effect uh, instead. Um, and then it also has an audience, which is uh, the favor cube that, uh, that you gain if you want to use that ability instead. So the idea is that you play uh, your entertainer uh, onto one of these stages, you do those effects, one of those effects, your choice. Um, and then you leave that entertainer on the stage. And then over time, you get a bonus if those entertainers have uh, matching agencies on them. So if you fill the main stage or the backstage with all three of one agency, uh, then you get an additional bonus uh, for that. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, the adventurers. Uh, the adventurers are uh, are kind of a cool vibe. Uh, what is happening here is that you're exploring. Um, and so we have these uh, square tiles that, uh, let me see if I can find those. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is still in development. Um, you can see that there's still some placeholder graphics here. Um, but uh, the general idea is that you will have a, a set of these tiles uh, and uh, you can place them uh, onto the uh, play area here. And you'll also be moving uh, your five different adventurer characters um, across the rooms and activating them based on certain conditions. Uh, you can see the five different characters here. And lastly, the uh, paladins. Um, so the idea is that you have five different uh, paladin uh, tokens or discs, and they are knights on one side and squires on the other side. As you do each of these actions, you're trying to accomplish the active quest you have that's going to be in this space over here. And those are mini cards that uh, that are special goals that the paladins are trying to accomplish to make the world a better place. Uh, so in this case, uh, the quest is that you're trying to distribute hard light tech. In this case, you're rewilding an abandoned city. And it kind of goes on from there. There's a bunch of stuff here. Oh, here's uh, one that you can actually read. Uh, return life to the sea. Um, you uh, spend four carbon and get one titanium and you get four points. The theme of this is that you're extracting carbon uh, CO2 from the ocean in order to uh, reduce its acidity. Uh, oh, and uh, here's kind of a cool thing. These are the actual data cards. Um, and you use these data cards to actually awaken the, um, the buildings that are on the main board. So that is a quick tour of Free Radicals. Um, hopefully I can do this kind of video again if you dig it, um, and uh, I'll be able to talk about some other games that we have uh, in the pipeline. Uh, we'll see what else I can show you in the future, but uh, I'll keep that a secret for now. So until next time, thanks very much. 